This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. At least three Russian refineries had to halt processing or cut runs due to heavy losses amid export curbs, rising crude prices and high borrowing costs, according to five industry sources. The closures highlight the struggles of the Russian refining industry, which has been caught in the crosshairs of Ukrainian drone attacks, Western sanctions on Russia, which force refiners to sell fuel at a discount, as well as high interest rates. The five sources who work at companies, which operate the refineries and are familiar with the refineries' finances, said the three plants, two apps, Ilsky and Novoshaktinsky, have suspended or cut runs in recent months. Oil prices settled down more than 2% on Friday as investors fretted about weaker Chinese demand and the potential slowing in the pace of U.S. Federal Reserve interest rate cuts. Brent crude futures settled down $1.52, or 2.09%, to $71.04 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude Futures, WTI, settled down $1.68, or 2.45%, at $67.02. For the week, Brent fell around 4%, while WTI declined around 5%. China's oil refiners in October processed 4.6% less crude than a year earlier because of plant closures and reduced operating rates at smaller independent refiners, data from the National Bureau of Statistics showed on Friday. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. China is planning its first export quota for marine bunker that is blended with biodiesel, partly to support biofuel producers hit earlier this year by European Union anti-dumping tariffs, according to two traders and a Chinese consultancy. The government is considering the issue of 500,000 metric tons of such quotas and all will likely go to the country's state oil firms CNPC, Sinopec and CNOOC, according to one state oil trader and consultancy JLC. The B24 marine fuel blend, separate from China's exports of low-sulfur fuel oil which is also under quota management, contains 24% biodiesel and 76% low-sulfur fuel oil, said the two traders. Since a UN initiative began monitoring for methane leaks from oil and gas infrastructure last year, it has issued 1,200 alerts to governments and companies. But only 12 of those alerts for major plumes, just 1% garnered a substantive response, with action taken to plug the leaks, according to a report by the UN International Methane Emissions Observatory on Friday. Many who were notified of the large methane plumes detected by satellites within their borders had signed up to a global pledge launched three years ago to cut methane emissions by 30% from 2020 levels by 2030. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. New capacity for converting bauxite into alumina due online next year is set to ease tight supplies and potentially halt a record-breaking price rally of the material used to make aluminium. Higher alumina prices outside China have turned the top producer and consumer into a net exporter this year from a net importer and boosted prices of aluminium, which is used in the transportation, construction and packaging industries. Disruptions in supplies of bauxite from Guinea and Brazil and output suspensions in Australia contributed to a 70% surge in alumina prices this year to a record 5,645 yuan, $779.77 per metric ton on the Shanghai Futures Exchange. Aluminium prices are up around 7% this year. Russia has imposed restrictions on the export of enriched uranium to the United States, the government said on Friday, creating supply risks for U.S. nuclear power plants which last year imported a quarter of their enriched uranium from the country. Russia said the temporary restrictions were a response to Washington's ban on imports of Russian uranium, which was signed into law earlier this year but contained waivers allowing for shipments to continue in case of supply concerns through 2027. Russia is the world's sixth largest uranium producer and controls about 44% of global uranium enrichment capacity. In 2023, the US and China topped the list of Russian uranium importers, followed by South Korea and France. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. 
Chicago Board of Trade soy futures rallied on Friday after China said it would cut its export incentives for used cooking oil, a move that could curtail the flood of imports into the U.S., market analysts said. On Friday, China's finance ministry announced it would reduce or cancel export tax rebates for a range of commodities and other products, including chemically modified animal, plant, or microbial oils and fats, effective December 1. The proliferation of imported used cooking oil in the U.S. biofuel market has been a drag on demand for U.S. soy oil, but a slowdown in used cooking oil exports from China could boost that demand, according to analysts. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.